Hello, Facebook friends. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. Um, if you looked at the description for the live video, then you know that I'm getting ready to teach you guys how to make the really cute little um, drink coasters using tiles. It's a super simple process. I'm gonna walk you guys through it and then um, hopefully encourage you to try to make some of these as gifts for Father's Day. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and Actually, before I get started, if you guys would do me a huge favor, if you've got family and friends that you think would enjoy this video and would learn to make, like to learn to make these uh, coasters themselves, would you share this on your page so that your family and friends can see? I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to have my phone turned down where you guys can actually see the process that I'm going through and be able to, to look and see what I'm doing. And then uh, in between the tiles, I'll pop back on and see if anybody's posted any questions. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let me go ahead and get this tilted. I'm gonna scoot the camera back a little bit too so that you can see. Okay, I think that's good. And if you guys are having any trouble seeing anything I'm doing, if somebody will just pop on with a comment to let me know, that would be great. I appreciate it. Okay, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, guys, is um, the tiles that I like to use are the four inch by four inch tiles. So in order to do the four inch by four inch, I have found that it's easiest if you just print the photos that you wanna use. Um, the ones that I'm gonna do tonight are actually photos that I went online and got. I went to, well, I say that one. Actually, this is a picture that Larry actually took of an old truck. So this one did belong to us, but the other three pictures of old trucks, which is what I picked tonight um, to use to show you guys, are ones that I have found online. Um, and I just print those off in a four by six so that the four inch length is already pretty close to what you want for your tile. And then I just trim it down from there so that it ends up being the right size for the tile. And as I go through and kind of talk you guys through this process, I'll um, give you guys some other ideas. Hello to my friend Randall, thank you for joining me. Hello Diana, um, I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for your support and your kind words. Um, what you can do is use pictures that you've printed. Um, you can use um, the sides of a container. Say maybe you've got a Mountain Dew fan uh, in your family that you'd like to make these for. So you could use um, by, you know, the cartons or crates of uh, 12 packs, 24 packs of Mountain Dew and cut out the different Mountain Dew um, labels on the sides and use those for your coasters. So kind of whatever you wanna do, anything goes. And as we go through uh, the process, I'll talk to you guys about some other things that I think would work and would be good. So to get started, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my four by six photo and I know that I want the majority of this truck to end up on my tile. So what I do is I sort of set the tile out in front. I hope you guys can see this good enough. Randall, Keisha, my friend Carol, can you guys let me know, is this good enough? Can you guys tell? I've got my camera, I think, pointed down far enough that you can tell what I'm doing. If you're having a hard time seeing it, somebody speak up. I'm gonna look up every couple of uh, seconds to see if you guys are commenting that I need to change something. Uh, anyway, so I'm looking and I know that I want the image of the truck for sure on my tile on this particular one. And I have purposely picked some more challenging photos so that I can show you guys how I go about um, figuring out what parts of those to put on the tile as well. So I'm going to look and I lay my tile kind of at the base of the image and see that I'm pretty happy with the way that turns out right there. If I made my lines right where I've got my tile laying, which is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my pencil here in just a minute and trace around it. So I'm just gonna move my tile up to where it's kind of even, just trying to kind of keep it straight in line with the view that I liked. And then I'm gonna take my pencil and draw around the tile. So just draw around the tile so that you'll know where your cut lines need to be. Okay, so you trace around that. Okay, 
When that's done, uh, guys, you can use just standard scissors if you'd like, but I like the look of more of a torn edge. So I've got my decorative scissors that I'm gonna use that truly looks kind of like a torn edge. And what I like to do, because if you um, cut out your image or whatever you're using, if you cut it out too large, it's gonna wanna kind of hang over on the edges of your tile and then it's really hard because we're gonna use a Mod Podge to actually do the decoupaging to stick it to our tile. And if you make it too large and it's not gonna to want to fit nicely on top of the tile, it's gonna be hanging over. And because your tiles are kind of rounded or even if they had a square corner, it ends up looking really weird if you try to um, get that to adhere to the edge of your tile honestly just kind of um, doesn't make your project look, to, look as professional or as nice. So to fix that and to avoid that, I actually am going to cut just inside my pencil line. That way I'm, I can ensure that the picture of this truck is going to end up being just a tad bit smaller than what um, the top of my tile is so that I don't have to worry about um, having that weird hard edge that quite honestly, it's hard to get it to stick down. And even if you do get it to stick to the tile, it just creates a really odd um, bump. I don't know what else to tell you guys, just a bump across that whole edge. It's lifted, it's just not attractive. So to avoid that, simply just cut your, your image just a hair smaller than your tile. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this image put on the tile. I'm gonna lay it down and do like a dry run, kind of a dry fit. And to be honest with you guys, let me look here. I think across the bottom, I still have just a little bit of overhang where I can tell it's gonna be really, really weird and try to make that strange edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little more of that off so I can avoid that. I'm looking up here at your comments. It looks like everything is good. I don't see anybody saying that you're having trouble seeing. So let's dry fit again. And guys, you wanna take your time with any DIY project that you're doing. Um, take those extra steps, couple of little steps. Doesn't take any time at all to do things like dry fitting. I don't care what you're working on, whether you're working with um, you know, images that you've printed off on, on um, paper, printer paper, and a tile, or if it's wood, or if it's fabric, always, always, always spend that little extra time. And yeah, that's one of those school of hard knocks things that I've shared with you guys before, where I've been rushed in the past and not taken my time and then regretted it. So you guys don't do what Lynette does, um, or what Lynette used to do, do what Lynette does now. So. We're doing a dry run. That one looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one going, um, and then I'll walk you through, we'll start working on our second tile. But what you wanna do is, I've, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've got uh, wax paper down that I'm working on. Um, if you're using Mod Podge, always put something down like a wax paper. I like to put wax paper and just tape it down. You can see on the edges, because when I'm done with my project tonight, I can just pick this up and throw it in the trash and it works out great. So always put something down when you're working with Mod Podge. And I try to make sure I kind of stay out of my area here where I'm gonna do my tracing. You don't wanna do the Mod Podge in this area and then put your photo here to try to get ready for your second tile because now this is gonna start sticking in that Mod Podge uh, and you're gonna have a mess. So kind of designate one area for this particular project. You wanna make sure you've got one area where you're gonna be doing your tracing and your cutting, and then kind of use the other half of your paper and always do the Mod Podge task on this side in the same area and keep all of that mess over here. Another one of those school of hard knock things that I learned the hard way years ago. Okay, so now we're gonna take, and guys, what I'm using is just regular old Mod Podge. So they've also got it now in a um, antique finish that probably would have looked really good for the project I'm doing um, tonight, but I'm currently out of it. So I'm just using the regular Mod Podge. And then you guys already know that these little sponge brushes are some of my favorite things. So we're just gonna use our sponge brush 
And the secret, one of the secrets to doing the Mod Podge, guys, is I've had a lot of folks over the years tell me I'm not good with Mod Podge. It never works out for me. And I can tell you guys, one of the secrets is you've got to get enough on. If you don't, you get really strange air bubbles underneath your project and it creates a mess. Now, I might end up with some air bubbles and I will let you guys know what the secret to getting those out is in a little while when a couple of our tiles are drying. I'll show you guys how to handle that. But you, the secret to the Mod Podge really is this very beginning process. As you guys can see, I am liberally putting this on because you want to make sure you've got it covered good. Make sure around your edges are good. Okay, and I've got it good. So now I can bring the tile back over and then kind of hold it up. If you notice, I've got it with a couple of fingers. Hold it up because once this touches, it's pretty much there, guys. There's not a lot of forgive with Mod Podge, so you've got to know that too. You're not gonna be picking this back up and moving it. So once again, I'm just gonna take extra special care. I'm getting it as close to the tile as I can without letting it actually touch the tile because I'm not gonna be able to pick it back up. So I'm looking and just making sure that from top to bottom, I look like I have the same amount of tile showing and from the left side to the right side that I've got the same amount of tile showing. And when I'm happy with that, I go ahead and lay it down, and then your secret here is you want to work from the center. Whoops, it is kind of starting to move on me. Okay, and if that happens, just put it back where you want it. Kind of hang on to one corner while you, you, you uh, work your bubbles out and get everything smoothed out. Work from the center. Anytime you guys are doing Mod Podge, you want to make sure that you start in the center. If any of you guys have ever done wallpaper, same principle as wallpaper. You want to start here and work out. You don't ever start on one corner or one edge and start working because that will create another headache for you. So start in the center and you're just simply going to be smoothing things out. So get all your um, bubbles out, make sure it feels good. You can rub your fingers over it and tell that you've got it down good. And when you're happy and satisfied that it looks good, I'm just going to do a little bit of extra um, pressure around the edges to make sure that they stuck down good this first time. And then we are going to be going back over this in a little while with more uh, layers of Mod Podge. But guys, this very first step is so important because if you get this wrong and it's not um, good and flat and nicely adhered, it doesn't matter how many coats we put on the top. It's never going to look the way you would want it to look. So, uh, got it there. We're going to set that one aside and move on to our next one. I'm purposely going to save the tuck guy for last. Um, let me, my phone is sending me a message here, so let me get rid of that. Okay, so now we're ready to do our second tile, and I've got an old truck again, and I know that I would want like the main cab part of the truck so that I can get at least that much of the image onto my tile. So on this one, I'm going to choose to get at least out to the edge of the front bumper and make sure, Francis, thank you, I appreciate you. Thanks for all your support. I wanna make sure that I get this front bumper um, even with the side of my tile. So if I push it up, kinda of like we did on the first one, guys, and just set it right next to the edge of the bumper, you can tell that we're even gonna get some of that old nice wood bed that it has. So I'm happy with the way that looks. So I like that. I'm simply gonna push my tile forward. And for some of you that just now joined me, what this process is doing here is helping you decide what part of your image um, you want to make sure gets on your tile. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna take my pencil and do the tracing once again. And just trace all the way around it. Okay. Once you've got that, I'm using, picking my scissors. And Francis, a couple of you that may not have been on when I first started, um, you can use just your standard household scissors if you want, straight edge. But I was explaining that I like this torn edge look that's created by using some of the decorative scissors. So that's what I always use when I make these tile um, coasters. So what you wanna do, you've got your um, square that you've traced around your tile and you want to cut just inside of your pencil line so that 
um, your image will sit nicely on the top of your tile without hanging over the edge. We don't want to have any hangover because it just doesn't look good and it leaves a really nasty um, bumpy look and it, it's hard and um, if you touch the edge it just creates a really hard edge doesn't feel good at all so we're going to cut that off to make sure that we've got our image that it's small enough to fill on top of the tile once again we're going to dry fit take a look yeah i'm not happy with that that's still a little too big guys so i know i don't want to lose too much of the bumper of the truck and make that look strange so i think i'm going to leave this edge and go ahead and cut on left to right. I'm gonna take a little more off. So we're gonna lose a little bit of our wooden bed, but that's okay. So we'll cut that off. And then let's just dry fit again. Important step. Okay, the left to right looks great. But guys, the, the edge down here, the bottom, is still gonna to try to create that nasty little hangover and just not look nice. So we're gonna cut a little more off. And you guys, um, if when you're doing this process, it's always best to not cut enough than to take too much because you take too much You're gonna have to start over with your image and that's not fun So just do a little bit at a time until you're happy with the fit So I'm looking here. I think that guy's good now So we're gonna make sure like I told you guys a while ago We're always gonna do the Mod Podge application on the same part of our paper so that we don't um, take a chance on ruining uh, any of our images. We don't want Mod Podge all over our paper. So always put the Mod Podge, do that work in one area and keep your other area for your tracing. So we've got the Mod Podge on. Now we're gonna take our image, we're gonna hold it up and just look to make sure that it's where you want it looks square on the tile. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna start in the center. And guys, these pictures are ones that I just went out and found online. And while we're talking about that, um, there's a possibility I may be selling these coasters. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them. So, um, I made sure I went to a free stock photo website. That's very important to know. So if you're crafting things and thinking that you might have a booth or try to sell them, you know, at your workplace or whatever, you wanna make sure that you use free stock photos um, because you could run into copyright issues and you don't want that. So that's why I picked free stock. Now, if you're doing it for a gift, I will tell you guys, I did a set of these. Um, for one of my employees a few years back as a Christmas gift and he was a guitarist in a rock band and um, is loves you know Jimi Hendrix and and some of those guys Eric Clapton so I did a set of uh, these coasters for him for Christmas and that wasn't as big a deal because I was gifting them so if it's for personal use commercial use um, it's okay for you to use, you know, an Eric Clapton photo, but if you're going to be selling it, I would stay away from that stuff and make sure you're always, always using a stock photo. Um, some other things that you can do, I shared at the beginning, is if you've got a Dr. Pepper fan at your house or a Mountain Dew fan, you can um, take the cartons that the drinks come in and cut those images out and use those. I think sports, um, I haven't done a set like that, but I think one done with the different sports teams or maybe a football and a baseball and a basketball and whatever would be cute. However, your guy, maybe he has a man cave and uh, his man cave is hunting and fishing and sporting things that way. So you could find really cool images um, of you know hunting images, fishing lodge looking images and use those images um, to do a set. So the thing I love about these is you can customize them to the recipient. Um, maybe a grandpa would love to have pictures of his grandbabies on the tiles. So just use your imagination, be thinking, put some thought and effort into who are you gonna give these to? Um, because then you can really create for them uh, custom coasters. Uh, my friends Randall and Keisha that are watching with us tonight actually um, bought a set of these coasters and gave them to Larry and I and I'm sure most of you know that we are boxer dog freaks um, and Keisha and Randall 
uh, bodice a set that have boxer dogs on them. Super cute. So just be thinking about your recipient and then you can customize these. And by doing that, guys, it tells the recipient that you cared enough to think about them and their taste or their interest um, and that you made them a customized gift. So if you just think about it, um, you could put a lot of thought and effort into it and really make your recipient know that you care because you took the time um, to make them a set of coasters that are custom just to them. Okay, so our next one, I love this. I'm gonna turn this around where you guys can see this. Uh, to be honest, this is probably my favorite one of the four. I absolutely love this photo. I think it's awesome. I just like the whole vintage feel of it. So anyway, um, on this one, we're not gonna be able to actually have the gas station, I don't think, in our, our tile. So same thing, I'm gonna to go to the, just the, catch the front part of the bumper of the truck, and it's gonna be enough, you guys can see, that it's gonna be enough that it's also gonna capture the old um, gas tank, gas pump, which I think is really, not tank, pump, gas pump. I think that's awesome. So I'm just gonna slide the tile forward like we did on the other two tiles. I'm gonna look around my edges, I'm gonna peek over here and make sure that I don't see the bumper uh, lurking out from behind the tile because if I did, I would need to move the tile over. But I don't see it, so I'm ready for my next step and that is to trace around the tile so that we can establish where our cuts need to be made. So we've got that. All right, I'm gonna take my scissors and for those of you that have joined uh, later, like my friend Alice, I see that you're on. Uh, thank you for joining me and thank you, Jason. So I'm gonna cut just right inside the pencil line. And the reason I'm doing that once again is because I don't want the um, image to be hanging over the edges of our tile because that um, creates a really ugly, bumpy, um, line down the side of our tile and just doesn't look attractive at all. So let's look and see where we're at here. Okay, I do need to cut some more off. So I'm gonna go across the bottom, make a cut across there to make sure we're getting our image where it'll sit nicely on the top of the tile. Okay, let's take a look. Dry fitting, guys. I hope you don't get tired of me saying it. It's so important. I can tell it got a little wonky right there. I'm gonna cut that corner off because I went a little crooked on my scissors there. Okay. Yep, this, this right-hand side is still a little long. So I'm gonna, I'll make the cut over here and the reason being because I don't wanna cut off the bumper of the truck so that I don't ruin my image. So I'm gonna come to the right-hand side and I'll just cut away a little more of the building that looks like the old gas station. So let's see if that's better. That is much, much better. So now I'm gonna go back over to the area where we're doing our Mod Podge. Make sure we get enough on. The key to Mod Podge, guys, is to make sure you put enough on it. I know when I'm painting, I usually tell you guys not to get carried away with the paint, but the Mod Podge is kind of opposite of that. So we've got a lot on. We're gonna pull it around. I'm gonna hover above the tile not really let it grab yet until I can take a look and make sure that it's centered on the tile. Get that extra mud podge off. Okay, that looks good, guys. Then we're gonna go to the center and start smoothing out our photo. Get that smooth. And guys, you can tell I'm not using exact science here when it comes to cutting the image um, or even putting it on the tile for that matter because it doesn't have to be perfect as far as the lines and the, the um, you know distance around the edges. You can lay it down and look and see what looks aesthetically pleasing and that will be plenty good enough. Okay, so we got that one on and it feels real good. I'm gonna let you guys take a peek at the first two we've done too so that you guys can see that they're nicely adhered and I'm gonna turn it in the light so you can see there's no air bubbles. And the reason that there's not air bubbles is because I made sure and put on enough Mod Podge. If you don't, you'll start getting really weird crinkly lines, bubbles. So make sure you put enough Mod Podge on um, that it sticks good the first time. So these are looking really good. I'll hold up the other one so that you guys can see it. Same thing, it feels nice and smooth. 
So no weird bubbles, we're doing really good here. So there's those. Now I saved the fun guy for last. This guy is a little more tricky and I'm gonna show you guys why. Because, I'm gonna hold the photo up where you guys can see it better. You see that in this picture, the truck itself takes up the majority of our four by six space. Okay, it's kind of full. Where in our other um, images that we used, the truck was more in the center and there was some space around it on both, on both edges. Not so with this image. So this one's a little trickier. And what we're gonna have to know is that we're not gonna be able to fit the entire truck on. And that's okay. Guys, years ago, I was one of these people, a perfectionist, I guess you should say, that thought, oh, well, if you can't see the whole truck, then it's just ruined. If you can't see the, the image of the entire thing, then, you know, that's no good. Well, I've come to learn over the years that um, there is a certain beauty and appreciation, and now I can appreciate, um, in seeing just parts of the subject matter. Um, and you guys will see what I'm talking about when I get this cut and put on. It's okay. It would be okay if all we used was the hood and the grill, which is pretty much probably what we're going to end up with. It's still really cool. It creates a nice little focal point, creates a nice little uh, subject interest there on just the grill or the, the um, headlights. We could do the same thing if we wanted to look at our picture and, and only see, you know, midway with the door and the bed of the truck. You see the old spare tire on the side with the little, weren't those called like moon? Hubcaps, does anybody know? Am I right? I don't know, I might be making that up. I think they're called Moon, just Moon? Moon something? Debbie, my brother, somebody, does anybody know? I don't know what they're called, I think. But anyway, that would still be cool if we just had that part of the, the truck on. It still creates a really cool interest on our tile. But I actually love the front part of this truck with the lights on, so I'm going to choose to use that going to do the same thing I've done on the other two trucks is I'm going to put my tile right kind of at the the edge uh, of the bumper and then whatever happens on this side happens guys and that's just baby moons Julie thank you baby moon okay I, I thought it had moon in it I couldn't remember the rest of it thank you for helping me out okay so I'm just going to move the tile straight up Look and make sure that the bumper's not peeking out over here, and it is, so I'm moving over just slightly, slightly, so I can get that guy covered back up, okay? Then I'm gonna take my pencil. We're gonna draw around the tile again so that we will know where to make our cut lines, okay? And I'm gonna take my decorative scissors we're gonna cut this guy out. And guys, let me just tell you, um, these go really fast. I don't know if you guys can tell, but you know, um, I'm having to do a lot of talking and explaining to you guys, but when you're ready to make these, you can make a set of these and seriously, printing out your photos, everything, you can be done with these. Um, I say done, you need to have some dry time in there to put your final coat of your Mod Podge, but you can have the bulk of this done in 30 minutes. These go really, really quickly. Doesn't take long to make these at all. So you could make a set for all the dads in your life for Father's Day. And I think they'd be great in, you know, in a man cave. Um, he could take them to his um, office, use them there. Um, if you've got a game room, they'd be super cute in there. And honestly, you know, maybe you would even let your uh, husband use them in your living room. So if that's the case, you might want to make sure you pick something that you like to. But anyway, all right, so I'm going to cut a little more of the grass off because this guy's just a little bit long, guys. So let's trim a little more of that off. I think I went kind of crooked. Let's straighten that up a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to do another dry fit. And this step is very important. Okay, I like that. And actually, it's too wide left to right. And I'm going to take a little bit off of both sides, I think, on this one. Because I can take away just a little bit of the headlight, and you're still going to get the effect of it. 
Okay, I think we're getting closer. That's it. That's much better. So I'm going to go ahead and put the Mod Podge on and stick this on there. And let, then I'll turn it around where you guys can see it better. So we're going to make sure we get enough Mod Podge to cover the back of our photo. Make sure that it's got enough that it's going to stick. Good. Okay. We're going to hover above and look at our spacing to make sure that we like it before we actually let it down. Because once you put it down, guys, it's there. You're not moving it. So let me straighten it up, kind of make sure it's straight. I like that. I think that looks good. So now I'm going to start from the, the center. And you will notice sometimes, guys, like on this guy, he's a little slippery. Can you? I don't know if you guys can see that. He will move around. Um, I think I got just a little bit more uh, Mod Podge on it than I have been getting, but that's okay. If you just let it sit there for a couple of seconds, um, the wiggle around effect will go away. So the moving around will get much better. So if I let it sit there, you saw just literally a couple of seconds and it got much better. So now I'm just doing the smoothing process to make sure that I've got all the um, air out from underneath it. And then before I move this one aside, I'm going to turn it around and let you guys look at it. Okay, that looks good. So we're good there. Now I'm going to show you guys. Can y'all see that good? I hope there's not um, a weird light on. Hi, Kristen. Let me see what you're asking me. Are you saying where do you buy the little tiles? Oh, okay. The tiles, you can pick these up at any of the home improvement stores like um, Home Depot, Lowe's. Um, Kristen here in our hometown, I don't know if Mike has them down at the lumber yard, I can't remember, but um, any of your home improvement stores are going to have them, a tile store would have them, um, and guys, I should have told you, I'm glad Kristen brought it up, I should have told you at the beginning of the video that a lot of people use the really slick ceramic tile for this, I don't like that as well, I use uh, the tumbled tiles, and they're, you know, a few cents more, I don't know, than what the, the little slick tiles are, but I think that the look that they give with their little imperfections and the in, in, uh, can't even talk indentions around the edges, I like that look better than just the smooth white. So, and you guys could use a smooth white if you want, but I just think the ones that have a little bit more character to them, I think the tiles turn out a lot cuter, but that's just my opinion. But um, you can get the tiles at a tile store. Um, I'll tell you another place that I've bought tiles and you can get them very cheaply, and that's at um, the Habitat for Humanity stores. They have really, really good deals on the tiles, guys. So that would be um, another really good place um, to look for your tiles to use for this project. Um, but guys, this is an inexpensive um, gift idea. The, this does not cost much at all to make. So um, they make a really good gift, but you could hit up your Habitat for Humanity store. And guys, I'm looking here. Hello to my friend Loretta and Angie, my sweet friend Carlene. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I'm looking to see, I hope I haven't missed any of your questions. I happen to just glance up and see Kristen's. If I've missed your question, um, if you'll post it again, I'll try to start uh, looking up a little more often to make sure that I'm answering your questions as we go along. Okay, so now that we've got all four of our towels done, I just realized I answered Kristen's question and didn't finish telling you guys, but look at this, guys. You see, even though we cut away, let me get this back up, we cut away the you know, back half, basically the bed of the truck, but look how cool that turns out. So it's really neat. So that old way of thinking that I had before where, oh, you can't just have part of a truck uh, on your art project. Yeah, that thinking is flawed. Look how gorgeous that is. Look how neat it turns out. Just a really, really cool photo. So don't go all the way Lynette used to be perfect on everything because it's really, it's okay. So I'm going to take back now, go back to our first tile, and you just want to let these dry probably at least 15 minutes in between, guys, from the time that you uh, first put it on. I'm sure it's been 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, we're way past 15. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting on this second coat of the Mod Podge is actually going to be, you want to make sure and go around your edges and get your edges down because that creates a really nice seal for the project. So get your Mod Podge on here. And guys, these sponge brushes, I have used just regular little craft brushes. 
um, and clean those up afterwards, but that's kind of a pain to be honest. So I honestly like to just use the sponge brush and then I just throw that away. So I've got my first coat uh, on that guy and he's the first one that we did. And as you can tell, I'm just looking around the edge and I'm making sure that the edges, because there's a little um, indention in the tile there, and I just want to make sure that that edge um, adheres properly, so I'm just going to push it down and then put just a little more Mod Podge over that part. Okay, now we'll move on to our second tile, and you're just putting these on as a top coat, and I'll go ahead and tell you guys too, um, just make sure you get around your edges good, that I usually put two coats of Mod Podge on at this point, so I'll do this one, and then I'll give it, you know, 15, maybe even 30 minutes, and I'll go back and put uh, my second layer of Mod Podge on, and then to really seal the project and make sure that your recipient's not ever going to have problems with it, um, I suggest, and I've always done this, is to put um, some sort of a acrylic sealer or a... Um, polyurethane over the top because that just protects it from you know they're going to be using these and when they put their um, drinks on the drinks are probably going to sweat you know create that moisture so you don't want to take a chance on ruining all your hard work uh, so make sure and just put a coat of uh, polyurethane or an acrylic sealer and I'll tell you guys the little sealers if you don't do a lot of DIY projects you might not want to go buy a quart of polyurethane so what I would suggest you do if you're not going to use it often is in the um, craft section at like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, your craft stores and even I'm sure Walmart I haven't bought it there in years but I'm pretty sure they have it um, is in a little acrylic sealer. It's gonna be by the little acrylic paints. So in the craft section, um, like at Walmart, you're gonna go and look wherever they have the little bottles of paint. They should also have, um, and I know years ago, for the last several years, I've just been buying uh, my polyurethane in quartz. So I haven't bought it in the little small bottles in a long time, but I used to say like acrylic sealer. And I'll try to look after the video, after I'm off tonight, and I'll post for you guys an example of what I'm talking about so you'll know exactly. Uh, the kind of sealer that I'm talking about. But if you don't do a whole lot of DIY projects, then maybe just that smaller um, bottle would be what you would wanna buy to make your tiles. If you don't wanna keep uh, polyurethane around in you know, a quart size or whatever. Okay, so we're gonna put our coat on here. Get it nice and smooth. And then guys, I will tell you on the um, second coat, which I can't put on for a little while, so you guys won't be with me when I put that on, but um, when I put, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera back up so I can talk to you guys for a minute. Okay, move it up a little more so I can take my head off. Uh, anyway, when you guys uh, put your second coat on I actually do the edges of the tile around all four sides because I just think it makes it look nice uh, it kind of brightens up the tile brings out a little more of the color of it I don't know if you guys have ever had um, rock work done in your home or like on your fireplace or um, if you've had granite installed in your home and you've been there when they put the sealer on it just brings out all the color in the rock well the same thing happens with these tiles so I go ahead with that second coat of Mod Podge, I go ahead and put that uh, around the edge, and I'll show you guys. I'm going to pick one of these up. All okay. Let me make sure you can see. I just take my brush and just lightly. It doesn't take a lot. Just lightly do the edges of your tile, and um, because it just makes them look nice, it makes it look finished. It makes the sides of your tile um, blend in better and and go with the top part that's peeking. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's see around our, our image where you can see the part of the tile. Uh, that color will be a little different from the side if you don't put the Mod Podge on. So just go ahead and put it on all four sides and then the edge of the top of the tile is going to match the actual edge of the tile. So it just makes it look a little more finished and makes it look a little nicer. So you want to do that um, and then put your polyurethane on, let it dry good. And from there, the only other thing I suggest 
is that you add felt to the bottom of your um, coasters. So you could use actual, like the crafting felt that comes in the big sheets. You could um, do the same thing we did with our images. You could lay that uh, felt down, trace around it, cut it out, and then put Mod Podge and stick it to the back of the coasters. Or you can do what I do, I cheat. Um, in the hardware section, like at Walmart, um, they've got the little felt um, buttons. I don't know what else to call them. They're just little round felts. They're kind of small. They're the ones that go on the inside of your like kitchen cabinet doors to keep them from slamming. So I buy those, and I'm gonna pick this up, and I just stick one on each corner on the back of my uh, coaster, and that works great. You could do the corners, you could even do one in the center with it and put five on, but that works perfect, and that's what I use on mine. But if you don't have those and you don't wanna go buy those, but you do have felt, then you could just glue felt on the back. You could also use cork. If you've got cork, like thin sized um, type cork, you could cut it out and put it on too. Okay, I've got a couple of questions here. Julie is asking, um, so to get images, you went to freestockphoto.com. You know what, Julie, I didn't look at the exact, um, I can't remember the exact website I got mine off of, but if you just do a Google search for free stock photos, there are several of them out there. And I will tell you that some of them are gonna want you to create an account. I mean, it's free, but they're gonna want you to create an account. I don't use those. I keep clicking through my Google search results until I find somebody that I, a website that I can just download the images because I don't care about creating an account. Now you might feel different than that and you're, you know, you could do that. But I just keep searching until I find one that I don't have to go through creating an account and I use those photos. And for those of you that maybe joined me a little later, I did want to tell you guys to just be careful. If you, as long as you're gifting these, um, you can use any photos really that you find on the web. But if you're going to be selling them, you have to be real careful about the images that you pick because you could get yourself into copyright issues and you wouldn't want to do that. So um, keep that in mind. Now, if they're your photos, and I'm going to brag um, for those of you that weren't on at the beginning, this photo is actually a picture. I'm going to hold it up where you guys can see it better. This is a picture that Larry took years ago. Um, he saw this old truck out in uh, an old abandoned truck out in a field and um, actually took his camera, came home, got his camera, went back so that he could take a picture of this truck. So this one image is ours, but the other three I did go and download. So um, just be careful if they're your images, images of your kids, and, and you're putting those on um, the tiles to give to dad or grandpa for Christmas, you're good. If it's, um, you know, the Mountain Dew, that type stuff, I would be careful about trying to sell those. If you're gifting it, you're fine, but if you're gonna try to turn a profit on it, you just wanna make sure that you think about copyright uh, issues so that you don't get into any kind of legal um, trouble with that. So um, those are those tips for that that you wanna make sure and keep in mind. I'm um, trying to think if there's anything else that I could tell you guys. Oh, there is one more thing. Several of you had asked me, um, either on my live the other night and have messaged me since then, asking about classes or um, projects that kids can do. And guys, you saw how easy these tile coasters are. They're pretty easy. So if you've got, I would say, probably, you know, seven, eight-year-old up, um, I feel confident that they could do these. I've got some grandbabies that are around that age and I would totally tackle this project with them. I mean, of course you're gonna wanna be there with them to, to help, um, but this could be something that they could make for dad or grandpa for Christmas, so, uh, for Christmas, <sighs> for Father's Day. <laughs> I guess I'm ready for Christmas. Anyway, for Father's Day. So um, you can get them you know, to help and let it be their project uh, for dad or grandpa because these are pretty simple. So um, that's one, one thing that you could do for them. And I've got another idea that I'm gonna try to get in the works for you guys that's a Father's Day idea. Julie, thank you and you're welcome. Um, I've got another idea for Father's Day that I'm going to try to come on in the next few days and do for you guys too. That's another idea of a DIY gift that you can do. And then I'm going to try to post a couple of other ideas throughout the next couple of days. So you guys, if you're interested in doing any of these for Father's Day, then you'll have plenty of time to get them done. So, um, okay guys, I'm looking. It's 845. 
So in 45 minutes, we've been able to make these and you guys can see that I am close to being done. And honestly, you could do a set of four if you're not talking and explaining everything like I have been. You can do these in under 30 minutes. And then um, what I like to do before I put my final polyurethane coat on is I try to make these ahead of time, at least allow the Mod Podge to dry overnight, like a 24 hour cure time then put my poly on. That's what I like to do. So I think if, if you guys can um, give enough time in between to do that, that's helpful. So there's that. There's how you make your DIY coasters. Um, and you guys look, you know, any anything that you can think of that's on paper. Uh, another thing I did think of today that I wanted to share with you guys, if you've got stencils, maybe you've got stencils that have sports, um, themes to them or they've got um, a lodge hunting theme or whatever, you could stencil images on too by just <clears throat> centering your stencil and then taping it down with like the blue painter's tape. You know, you know how to do the stencil process, I'm sure, but then just, you know, get your paint, your sponge, sponge your stencil on, let that dry, remove your stencil, and you could do stenciled ones and then just poly your thing over that. So that's a couple of, uh, a different idea, a couple ideas for you guys. You can use images or you could use a stencil. Another thing I think would be cute, you could um, have maybe your younger kids could write messages to dad and grandpa. Write those on in Sharpies and then polyurethane over that. That would be a nice little keepsake. Or maybe you've got a one or two year old and you could get images of their hands and, and you know put the little um, paint on their hands and let them put their handprint down. That would be super cute too. So anyway, I hope these ideas have helped you guys and I'll be back on in a couple of days with my one other idea that I've got for Father's Day and try to give you guys time to get those made before Father's Day gets here. Um, I appreciate you guys so much. I thank everybody that was able to join me tonight and if you came on um, later in the live, then you can hop back on in a little while, get it posted and you can go back to the beginning of the video um, where I explain kind of my selection process and how, um, you know, decide where the images go on the tile and that thing. I kind of went into more detail at the beginning of the video. So hop back over there and watch that. And then I'm going to try to do what I did today and start letting you guys know hours or maybe even a day ahead of time when I'm planning to go live. So um, Facebook automatically creates an event for me when I do that. And then you can say that you're interested or that you're going and you'll get a pop-up reminder when I'm going live from now on. So I'm working towards that. So hopefully I can do that for you guys from this point forward. So thank you to all of you. I hope I gave you some good ideas tonight and I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a good evening. Bye-bye.